The seven volume work In Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust is not only one of the greatest literary achievements of the 20th century, but also has its very own place on the Olympus of world literature. And after reading the recherche, the volumes will not simply wander back onto the bookshelf, but will accompany the reader through life from now on. At least that was the case for me and my Desert Island book would certainly be in search of lost time. But many feel averse to the work. It would be too difficult to read, the scope would be far too large and the sentences which stretch over whole pages are for many far too long. Then there is also the prejudice of snobbery that it's just the gossip of the bourgeoisie at the Parisian soirees and why should one read 40 pages about someone who can't sleep? This would be now a good opportunity to ask yourself what you expect from literature, whether you really just want an exciting story that is easy to read, including the entertainment factor that it brings one could name dozens of booming subcultures in trivial literature, or whether you would rather devote yourself to a work where you should slow down the reading speed quite drastic. Proust's work is particularly suitable as a balance to the speed of our everyday life in the information age. That's why I can only advise overcoming the hurdles and trying your hand at the first volume Swan's Way, which opens up a world of its own, which is not far from ours, and Proust then truly accompanies you throughout your life. When I read the first pages at the age of 20, I naturally had to get used to the language first and read most of the sentences several times, but that cosmos completely captivates you after just a few pages and you realize that this is a work which you won't forget so quickly. The identification with the narrator, who is also called Marcel, develops more with every moment of his intimate reflections until one almost finds oneself in him or becomes one of our alter egos, as with Roland Barthes, for example. After the first reminiscence, we meet the narrator as a child and accompany him through the jealousy attacks of love, through the soirees of the aristocracy and through the grieving process after several losses of loved ones until he leaves youth behind and youth at itself will be manifested as an untainable desire in his meditations. The observations and reflections of the narrator are described in such striking detail which is rarely found in literature that we become the readers of ourselves while reading or as Proust puts it in the last pages of Time Regained. Please note that this is a translation of the translation out of German from Eva Rechelmertens and not the English translation of In Search of Lost Time. But to come back to myself, I thought more humbly of my book and it would be inaccurate even to say that I thought of those who would read it, my readers. For in my opinion, they would not be my readers, but the readers of themselves, since my book would only be something like a magnifying glass, my book through which I would enable them to read within themselves. Proust's power of observation also helps you to find completely new details in the people or places of our everyday life which only seem to be disenchanted and sealed by conventions. In search of lost time often leads to moments of introspection in which one puts the book aside for a moment as the written word harmoniously combines with one's own memories. In addition to all the personal connections to the work, it is also an excellent time document of the Belle Epoque and captures the zeitgeist of the turn of the century, similar to Stefan Zweig's World of Yesterday, retrospectively, a posteriori, 
as both works were written in the times of the two world wars. The habitus of the bourgeoisie and the aristocracy is also explored with the display of cultural capital and social capital being dealt with in depth in those conversations. Thus Proust, like Pierre Bourdieu decades later, empirically eavesdropped on conversations, scrutinizing clothing and table manners, or questioned the self-proclaimed definitive taste in art of the bourgeoisie, whereby Proust's studies, as I said, were limited to the upper classes. Since this could be alienating for many people, because there are hardly any points of contact with that social class and their own knowledge of the culture of the Fé des Siècles is rather limited. I would like to encourage them once again to try to read the Recherche, because this work, despite its length, is quite accessible if you take the time or have it. Because the previously mentioned throttling of the reading speed becomes a decisive factor and this also makes it possible to read only two or three pages a day, which is completely sufficient. Personally, I have had the privilege of having enough free time outside of my studies and art during the COVID-19 lockdown, which has enabled me to devote myself to the work accordingly. But I also spent many hours reading on the train or while traveling, which allowed me to contemplate the passing landscape and the reflections on the water of Lake Zurich in moments of my own introspection. This period of time with my first reading of In Search of Lost Time is certainly one of the most beautiful moments of the last few years, mainly because it opened up a whole new cosmos of language, observations, memories, thinking, art and music for me. In his essay Days of Reading, Proust circles around these moments of reading whereby one is transported as if through music into a seemingly better world, which however is more closely connected to our own being than to that of the author, and we thus, as mentioned before, become the reader of ourselves. Or in Proust's words, as long as reading is the initiator for us, whose magic key opens the door to spaces deep within ourselves that we would otherwise not have been able to penetrate, its role in our lives is healing. And there were enough of those salutary moments in search of last time, the reminiscences of Combré may make our own long-buried childhood memories appear to us, while the episode with Gilbert make, brings back our first hesitant steps in love, right up to the moments of enchantment because of the mysterious group of girls in Balbec with Albertine in the center, whose graceful figures completely mess with the narrator's head and evoke those first glimpses of a summer romance longed for in youth. The longing for a bygone era also plays an important role, beats the fascination for the Gothic cath uh, cathedrals in the Normandie or the view from past painters onto the sea, which is now filled with ships in the times of narration, and the narrator hides those from the sea with his own hands, so that he can experience the same pure gaze as his idols from ages long past. After or even while reading In Search of Lost Time, our relationship with our outside world our habits and also with our own memories change. This was a somewhat smaller text. I will probably devote myself to a much larger one in the coming months and was mainly intended to convey a few important cornerstones of Proust's work in a way that, that was, should be as inviting as possible to read for yourself. If you are not yet convinced, I can recommend you a readable book entitled How Proust Can Change Your Life by Alain de Botton or Ellen de Botton, however you want to pronounce it. In that book, a few funny and exciting anecdotes about Proust himself are presented and also some quotes from In Search of Lost Time are to be found. 
the book reads very fluently, although one can rather ignore the self-help character of the book and read the book more as an original little introduction to Proust. Otherwise, I recommend everyone to read the first 50 pages of the first volume, Swan's Way, as the magic that runs through the entire recherche is already present in the first few pages and it also begins with one of the most famous passages. The following story, Swan's Love, has the effect of an exposition of the themes, like in a sonata or a symphony, for example, which appear again and again in different colors during the course of the recherche, while they're modulated into different keys until the themes find their transfiguration in the last hundred pages of the seventh volume. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you like it, might if you like it, might take a look around on the channel and give it a thumbs up or subscribe. So thank you very much for listening. Have a good day. Bye bye.